The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Just call me Angel of the Morning. Angel. Good morning, Ben. Where is he? Where's who? The little pup. Pup. I don't understand. You said that we were getting a beagle. Oh, we are getting a beagle. In fact, it's right here in this bag. Huh? It's a beagle bone black. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Let's get started with the Beagle Bone Black. Now, unlike the Raspberry Pi, the Beagle Bone Black has its own built in flash that stores the Linux distribution so it can boot directly from that. You don't need an SD card to boot from. However, you do need an SD card in order to update the flash, basically, you know, update the Linux kernel. And if we want to use the Beagle Bone Black LCD cape, we need to put a newer version of Linux on it. Okay, so this is our guy here, the LCD4. All right, it looks like it's compatible with the latest version of the Linux distribution for the BeagleBone Black, so we're gonna need to find that. Okay, let's see, update, BeagleBone Black. Blah, blah, blah. All right, okay, we're on the website, let's see, so here are the drivers that allow the computer to talk to the BeagleBone Black over a USB cable, so we won't need that quite yet, but we'll be ready for that when the time comes. Uh, without the drivers, um, you can't see this as a mass storage device, and also, you can actually browse to the BeagleBone Black using a web browser on your computer over the USB cable and configure many things. You can also putty into it as well. All right, so here is the latest image. So I'm going to download this image and then burn it to an SD card. We're gonna need a micro SD card with at least four gigs on it. So there's a pretty handy program that I already have called a Win32 Disk Imager. And I have that because you use it for the Raspberry Pi when you create a Linux image for its SD card. And even though we're just using the SD card to boot from and install from, we still write an image to it the same way. All right, here we go. Um, it just gives you a device number, so you wanna make darn sure that it's the correct one. Okay, so I see Beagle Bone Black. That's gonna be the F. Okay, I see the F is the SD card. I don't wanna go into my Ready Boost. And you know, if you plugged in an external hard drive, like a USB drive, it would actually come up as an option. You certainly don't wanna flash over that. So making sure we have the right device, F, I'm gonna get the image file that we downloaded. Okay. All right, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna write it. This will probably take about 10 minutes. Bam! The card is flashed. Let's uh, stick it in the BeagleBone Black. It goes upside down. It's kind of an interesting mounting system. So for the flash procedure, they recommend you use an external power supply. So I've got this five volt uh, wall ward here. This switch here is the um, programming boot switch. So what I'm gonna do is hold that in as I apply power to the BeagleBone Black. And that will start the flash procedure, putting the image on the SD card onto the internal memory. These blinking lights mean that it's being flashed by the SD card. Once these lights go solid, we know that the flash procedure is complete and then we can use the BeagleBone Black. The lights are solid, which means we flash the new image. Remove power. Now, before we turn it back on, we wanna make sure that we remove the flash SD card. And notice if you leave it in there, even if you're not pushing the boot button, it'll still try to flash and muck things up. Okay, there's four basic ways I'm going to show you to connect to your BeagleBone Black. The first way is quite easy. You just stick a USB cable into it, and by default, it will act as a mass storage device, and also you can network into it over the USB cable. So this BeagleBone Getting Started drive appeared on my computer. I'm gonna hit start here. It's gonna open a web page, all right. This, it makes it very easy. See, these two steps have already been accomplished. I'm gonna scroll down here. You might need to download drivers in order for this to work. I've already done that, but the driver links are right here on the mass storage device. They make it so easy. Uh, there should be an IP address here. Uh, I gotta find it. It should be like a really big, oh, here we go. 
Okay, this web page is being served from the Beagle Bone Black. And it's really easy to do some simple tests. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Digital right. And these tests all use the built in LEDs. You can actually run this bone script, which is an implementation of Java, right from your web browser. So if I hit this, it should actually make the lights do something. See? And you can actually edit it right in your browser. It's so easy to get started. So I'm going to make all the lights turn on. I'll set them all as outputs. This will be a lot easier to see on camera. Okay, let's try this code. All right, so we know we're connected. There's, you know, obviously there's a lot of I.O. that you can use on this, but those LEDs are a quick and easy way to see that it's working. There's even something in here called the Cloud9 IDE, which is a web-based uh, IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. And if you look up here in the browser window, uh, 192.168.72 is the IP address, and 3000 is the port. So there's certain ports on this that you use. One will be for SSH, one will be for browsing to a web page, and 3000 appears to be for this cloud IDE. Uh, yeah, it's actually like a little IDE, and you can actually run these examples right from your web browser to be a bone black. Very cool. Now it's time for a tech timeout. In this project, we've been hooking up different displays to the BeagleBone Black, such as HDMI and an LCD display. So I thought it might be cool to talk about differential signaling, which you see a lot of in displays. Batman's grappling hook. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so old school, you had single-ended signaling. That's where we have like obviously ground or zero volts, and then a logic level high, such as five volts or 3.3 volts and you made your zeros or ones by going up to five volts or back down to zero volts. There's also a rise and fall time involved with this, and that's the amount of time it takes a signal to get up to its logic level high. So this actually, you know, can add up. This can be a lot of time, which makes a signal slower. Differential signaling is different. <laughs> There's a baseline in this case, let's say one volt, and you actually need two wires or a pair. Sometimes you'll see a twisted pair. And that actually creates your zeros and ones. So if the blue line is higher than the black line, that signifies a zero. Or if the black line is higher than the blue line, that signifies a one. So it's the difference between the two lines that gives you your data. The advantage of this, if you don't have to have as high of a voltage in order to make zeros and ones, you can actually switch a lot faster. Also, it has more immunity to noise. So that's why you see this on a lot of high-speed modern things like HDMI, USB, SATA, DVI, LVDS, or low voltage differential signaling, and more things I can't think of right now. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. There's a micro HDMI port on the BeagleBone Black, so I'm gonna use this adapter and plug the HDMI into my computer monitor. It's quite easy to get the BeagleBone Black to run on an HDMI monitor. And the interface is um, pretty fast too. We can look into our folders here. Uh, one thing I've noticed is a little tricky on this, um, attaching uh, Wi-Fi dongles is not quite as straightforward as it is with the Raspberry Pi. But I'm sure given time, it will be a lot easier. I'm actually gonna move these icons over here for the next example. So I could hook this up to the network using my ethernet cable, even though my router is completely full and uh, you know we could download more packages and whatnot. So it's pretty easy to use be the BeagleBone. There's lots of ways to get into it. What is this, some sort of readme file? When I'm using my little wireless uh, USB keypad, this thing is, I, I don't know, I got this for like 20 bucks off eBay. It's pretty handy. Now let's use a BeagleBone cape. A cape is a device that you plug into a BeagleBone or BeagleBone Black. This is the LCD cape. You can actually run Linux right on this cape. BeagleBone capes have an EEPROM on them and that actually tells the BeagleBone what the cape is. The EEPROM has some data on it saying name of cape, what pins it uses, and information like that so the BeagleBone knows what to do with it. And it's also numbered the pin wise so 
since this isn't keyed, you obviously want to plug it in the right way. Okay, so I'm also going to plug in a uh, USB hub. We want to make sure everything's plugged in before we power it. Uh, typically, one USB port can supply about 500 milliamps or half a amp of power. Yeah, sometimes a little bit more. So, you know, if you have a USB hub with four USB devices on it, it's conceivable that you could, you know, basically overpower the USB port. You won't kill the port. You'll probably just blow the poly fuse and have to restart the computer. But it's a good idea just not to overpower it in the first place. All right, so I've got my little wireless keyboard here, and this should boot right up into the same graphical user interface we saw on the computer, albeit much lower resolution. All right, I'm gonna do one more example. First, I'm gonna make sure I set this thing down correctly. Um, in the terminal, I can do shutdown space H and shut down when, shut down now. You can just remove power, but it's better to do it correctly if you can. Of course, you can hook up to your BeagleBone Black over the network. I'm gonna plug it into an ethernet cable here give it power. Once it boots, it should show up on my network. The BeagleBone Black is on the network. I'm going to go into my router here and see. Okay, it's been given this IP address. I'm gonna copy that IP address. Okay, so I have the IP address. I can go into PuTTY, which is a free um, Telnet program that you can download. It allows you to SSH or secure shell into Linux systems. I'm gonna type in the host name, which is the BeagleBones location on my network. Port 22 is a standard port. Hit open. Should get a login prompt here. Okay, login as root default password. There's no password. Okay, cool. So now I'm in the BeagleBone Black over the network. So there it is. So you could have your BeagleBone, you know, in a remote location. You could tunnel into it over the internet through your router and command it. I mean, this is very much or exactly like how a Linux server works. So those are the four basic ways to connect to the BeagleBone Black. Before we end though, I'd like to show you a few more ideas I have to use for the BeagleBone Black in the future. A few months ago, I came across this LCD screen that's available. It's a really wide LCD screen meant to go on your car's sun visor, which is probably not legal. But what I liked about this is almost exactly the same ratio as a pinball machine display. So what I thought we could do is take this display, and instead of using its crappy composite input, we actually take its LVDS, or low voltage differential signaling connector, and hook that directly up to a BeagleBone Black. Now granted, we would need a conversion chip or two in there, but it's not too much different than that LCD cape that you saw us use earlier. So what we could do in a pinball system is you use the BeagleBone Black, the Linux could drive the display and the sound and all that, that would be very nice. And then the BeagleBone Black also has some low-level microcontrollers that could be used to do the low-level pinball stuff. So, yeah. Someday I hope to attach this screen to a BeagleBone Black. Hey, little feller. I'm gonna name him Doug. You like to play fetch? I have a treat. While Allison's off naming inanimate objects, I'll tell you about our next episode. We're going to be doing some more work with homebrew reflow surface mount ovens. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>